I've been exploring options for managing all my projectiles in my game using the flyweight pattern. The flyweight pattern aims to minimize memory usage and improve performance by sharing as much data as possible with similar objects. All my fireballs, for example, share the same prefab and some other values, and this data is stored in a scriptable object. What would be nice is to combine the utility of the flyweight pattern with Unity's object pool class. So what I'd like to do today is create a simple but powerful factory that can not only create our flyweight objects, but move them in and out of their own object pools as well. I'm going to start by defining a simple flyweight class that will contain a reference to the intrinsic settings. Intrinsic values are the ones that are shared by all the flyweights. So we can define all those common values in a scriptable object. I'll just call it flyweight settings. It's going to have a reference to the prefab. Then I'll add a few more values that'll work for my projectiles that I'm going to set this up for. Now, I'm also going to have a method in here that will actually create a flyweight for me. So I can instantiate it into a variable here and set active false. I'm going to make sure they're all named the same, and I'm just going to name mine after my prefab names. Now I'm going to add the flyweight component to it and set the reference to the settings. Then I can return the object. I'm going to add a create asset menu attribute. And this is really all the shared data I want for right now. So I'm just going to move this into its own file. Then I can come back to my flyweight class and just I'm going to add some really basic functionality here so I can test it out. So while the flyweight is active, I want it to be always moving straight forward. So it can grab the speed from the common settings and just every update, move it ahead a little bit. And then we'll despawn it after a little while. For now, despawning is going to mean actually destroying it. So I'm just going to wait for a certain amount of time and we can set that on enable and then we'll destroy it. So in on enable, let's just start a coroutine here. So I'm using a helper method here to get a wait for seconds, and I actually am storing them in a little dictionary. Why don't we go take a look at that quickly? So instead of creating a new wait for seconds every time I want one, I'll just create it the first time, store it in the dictionary, and every time I want one afterwards, I can just request it this way. Now back in my settings, I'm also going to add an enum here for types of flyweights. This will be useful when we start building our flyweight factory. I'm just going to make two types for now for this demo, fire and ice. And that's it. Let's add a property here in the flyweight settings. And that's about all we need right now. If I jump back over to my hero class, I can put a little implementation in here so we can start testing it out. So if we had a public list of flyweight settings here, in our update method, we could check for some key presses and then our flyweight settings can create the flyweight for us. We can just set it at about eye level of the character and turn it on. Now, this is a very naive implementation, but it's really just for testing. Before we go back into Unity, let's also make sure that it's rotated the right direction as well. So back here in Unity, I can start defining some scriptable objects that will contain all of this shared data for each flyweight. So the first one here could just be for fire, and I already have a fireball um, particle system that I want to put onto here. So I'll just drag that prefab into here, and I think the, the default values for the other things are okay. Now I'm just going to duplicate the fireball, and I'm going to call this one Frost, because the prefab is actually called Frost Missile. So let's find it here, drag that in. Now the hero just needs references to both of those scriptable objects that we just made, and that's really it. Once those references are in there, we can press play and try it out. So I'll just zoom in a little bit here, and let's see how this super basic flyweight is working. Yeah, we got both types here, just pressing one and two, and yeah, no problem. So this is okay, but it's not really that useful. We're still destroying the flyweights when they run out of time, and that's garbage collection. And I don't really want to start managing individual object pools for every type of flyweight in my game. So what would be really nice is to create a simple factory that will manage all of this for us. And I'm going to call that the flyweight factory. I only want to have one flyweight factory, so I'm going to use a version of the singleton pattern here and just keep an instance of it here as a static variable. And then I'm going to start leveraging Unity's object pool class. We'll keep an object pool for each type of flyweight in a dictionary. So to maintain the singleton in a wake, let's just check to see if instance was null or not. If the instance was null, let's set instance equal to this and don't destroy on load. Otherwise, we'll destroy the game object. So in a moment, I'll create a few public methods to act as an API to this. But we're going to need a private method. So when we pass something in here, 
we need to know which pool it actually belongs to. Since all of the flyweights have a reference to their settings, which contains the type, we can use that to find out which pool this object belongs to. So we pass in the settings and we'll try and get the pool. If it exists, we return that pool. If it doesn't exist, then we need a new object pool for this particular type. So let's create a new object pool of type flyweight. The constructor for a basic object pool in Unity takes in four callbacks and three values, so I'm just going to put each one on its own line. We've already made a create method in our settings class. The create method is a func that returns the same type as the pool. Now the other callbacks are all actions of that type. We'll be able to keep those in our settings class as well. The last three values we can just define in our factory here. I'll just get all these code hints out of the way for a second. So we've got create, and then we've got actions that fire on get, on release, on destroy. And then we've got three values that we'll set for each pool that we want to create. So up at the top of the class, I can declare serialized fields for each of the primitives. Finish up that private method, we need to add this new pool to our dictionary. And then we need to return the pool. So let's set up these action callbacks. On get, we just want to enable the game object. On release, we'll do the opposite. And if we were actually going to destroy this pooled object, then we can just actually destroy it. All right, our factory is almost ready. We just need some public methods so that we can interact with this factory. So I'm going to make two static methods here. One is going to spawn a new flyweight. To do that, the consumer just needs a reference to the settings scriptable object. So I'm going to pass that in. Then we'll get the pool for those settings, and then we'll actually call the get method on the pool. Now we'll basically do the inverse of that when we want to return a particular flyweight to the pool. The flyweight has a reference to its own settings, so it knows what type of pool it belongs to. We'll just call the release method on that pool, and that's it. Now back in the hero, we're not going to create flyweights ourselves anymore. We're going to call the flyweight factory spawn method, pass in the settings for the one that we want. I'll just change both references here. Then we also don't have to set active to true anymore because we already have a callback for that. Now the last thing to do is we don't actually have to destroy these objects anymore. Instead, let's just call the factory's return to pool method and pass in this. Back in Unity, all I have to do is create a flyweight factory here. We'll just add the component here to the new game object. I'm just gonna pull this down a little bit so we can see the hierarchy a little bit better. So now if I start pressing the buttons here, we should watch these things start to deactivate themselves and stay inside the pool. Yeah, there we go. So they're not being destroyed anymore. And now if I start casting again, you can see some of the existing ones start activating again. And then after a little bit, they go back into the pool. So this is a very simple implementation of a flyweight factory, but it really only makes one kind of flyweight, which is a projectile. Wouldn't it be nice if we kind of separated the flyweight logic from the projectile logic so we could make any kind of flyweight? Maybe a tree or an enemy? There's really two ways we could go about this. We could extract an interface or we could extract a base abstract class. So both of those methods have their advantages, but the interface would require using generics and it would get quite a bit more complex. The simpler way to go here is use an abstract class. So I'm going to pull out all of the projectile specific logic into a new class projectile. We'll just leave the settings in the flyweight. Now our intrinsic data for projectiles is probably different than any other sort of flyweight, so let's jump over to the settings class. I'll make a new class that extends the flyweight settings. We'll just call it projectile settings. Now as we continue to develop our game, we could add more values in here. For now, Copilot's suggesting damage, sure. I'll move these other projectile specific settings into here. And then I'm going to make all of the methods virtual. That way we can override them from the base flyweight settings class if we want to. Let's add a create asset menu attribute here and move this into its own file. Now if we jump back over to our new projectile class here, you can see we've got a few things that can't be referenced. And that's because flyweight settings in the base class isn't the projectile settings type. So let's cast it into a projectile settings type. We'll need to use the keyword new here because we're using the same variable name. There we go. All right, just a few more references to change. Back in the hero, we're still referencing flyweight settings. This should really be projectile settings. We can enforce the type here. 
And I'll just change the variable name too to be projectiles. That's all we really have to change there. If we come back to our projectile class, because it's a mono behavior, it needs to be in its own file. I'll move that over here. And then one more thing is we should really override our create method in the projectile class because we don't want to add the flyweight component to it. We want to add a projectile component to it. I'm just going to copy and paste that same create method over into our projectile settings class here. And we'll change this to an override and we'll change the type of component that's being added from flyweight to projectile. Now in the future, we'll be able to add any more custom logic we want when creating projectiles here. And we could override the other callbacks as well if we wanted other behavior when despawning or spawning, etc. All right, well, let's jump back into Unity and just make sure that I didn't break anything. Press play and start shooting off some projectiles. Yeah, it looks good. Looks really good. Let's just make sure they're going back into the pool properly. Yep, perfect. Well, I hope that gives you a few ideas if you're looking to manage the spawning of objects that all share some common settings. I'm still weighing the pros and cons of using interfaces instead of a base class for this, and I'd like to key the pool dictionary differently. Let me know what you think in the comments below. 